Hey everybody, welcome to the video series Scientific Principles of Weightlifting. This is our sixth video in the series, the principle of phase potentiation. So what is phase potentiation? Phase potentiation can be defined as a strategic sequencing of training to enhance potential subsequent phases. So meaning different phases of training sequenced in order, each phase subsequently enhances the phase that follows it. Let's look at the three different phases, the main phases we're going to use in the training of weightlifting. We've got the general phase. This is the earliest phase in the training cycle. And what we're going to have here is a development and a focus on GPP. So in this phase, the athlete's going to be mostly focused on general means, so regular uh, exercises, basic exercises that are going to enhance those general qualities. Strength general strength, the strength of the legs, the strength of the back, the strength of different muscle groups. Uh, we can work on weaknesses here to bring up the strength of something like your legs versus your back, or just in general, the overall physical strength of the organism. Work capacity. We're working on developing a very large work capacity in this phase. This is mostly so that in the next phases, we're able to perform enough training and enough work to, to capture the results we want there. To some degree, hypertrophy is also a key uh, in this phase. So more as a byproduct of the fact that we're doing such high volumes of training, training for strength, GPP, and work capacity, we're gonna have the benefit of increasing some muscular size. If we wanna have muscles that produce more force, we have to make muscles bigger in order to do that. How general is based on a lifter's development. Somebody who's very, very new to weightlifting or very early in their career, is going to do a lot more general exercises because they need to develop that basic general athletic ability, uh, work capacity, flexibility, strength. All these things are, are necessary for someone who's very new. You can think of it as them having to kind of build this foundation for themselves versus somebody who has a lot of experience or maybe an advanced athlete, an elite athlete that may have 10 or 15 years under their belt. Their general phase is going to be much, much smaller much less general because they've already developed a lot of these basic qualities. They're probably very, very strong. They probably have the requisite amount of muscle. They've filled out their body weight class uh, and their work capacity is probably very, very high already. Uh, and then the other result or the other reason to do the general phase is to avoid staleness. After competition, once the lifter has uh, peaked, hit their competition PRs, done all this, there needs to be some phase that allows them to kind of reintroduce themselves back to hard training. The general phase is a good place here because the variations used are going to be further removed from the actual competition exercises uh, and that variation allows them to stave off any kind of adaptive resistance. The length of period of time for general phases is going to last anywhere from two weeks to as long as six months even. Really just depends on the athletes, like we talked about the athlete's skill, the athlete's level of expertise, uh, how qualified the athlete is, uh, and then how much a degree of general training will affect that athlete. Uh, just because an athlete is you know, new to the sport doesn't mean they don't have a large base or a foundation of general training. If they came to the weightlifting from CrossFit or from some other endeavor, they probably have a large base of, of uh, general training. So that, that phase can be shorter. In a situation where a lifter has you know, a very, very advanced career, this general phase may be very, very short. So that time frame is, is based on the lifter's qualification level. The next phase, strength phase. The main goals in the strength phase for weightlifting are going to be increasing maximal strength, uh, the ability to produce more force. The muscle needs to be, the, any new tissue that we developed earlier in the training cycle, we now need to teach that muscle how to generate more force. Explosive strength. We need to develop more, we need to have an athlete become more explosive in this period of time. One of the reasons for having less emphasis on explosive strength, despite it being a specific uh, or more specific adaptation for a weightlifter in the general phase is that the high volumes used in the general phase are going to be contradictory to becoming more explosive because the levels of fatigue are gonna slow the lifter down from doing high repetitions per set. And then the third main priority in the strength phase is rate of force development. The athlete needs to be able to develop as much force as possible, as quickly as possible. Uh, and so this is the key, the key time for this to happen is during the strength phase before they need to refine their technical prowess in the third, the third block. The length of time for a strength phase, again, like the general phase, is going to be dependent on how qualified the lifter is. The more qualified a lifter is, the longer they're probably going to spend in this phase. 
If they're far out from their competition, they can spend a little more time here. If they already have the requisite general qualities and they just need to develop these qualities to a higher degree, they're gonna spend more time here. Average time here is gonna be somewhere between four weeks to, you know, it could be even as long as six months. Really depends on the qualification of the lifter and the specific needs of that lifter. The third phase we have here is gonna be peaking, okay? In the peaking phase, the number one priority here is to develop the technical prowess, the technical skill of the one rep max snatch, one rep max clean and jerk. The main goal during this phase is going to be the management of the fatigue and fitness. So they're going to come into this block of training, this phase of training with a high level of fatigue from all the subsequent training phases that have transpired. The main goal here is to decay that fatigue, bring the results of the athlete in the snatch and clean and jerk to the highest level on the day of competition in a predictable manner. We also have the psychological or tactical preparation of the athlete uh, to consider in this phase, uh, getting the lifter ready and confident uh, that they're gonna execute perfectly on the day of competition. Uh, this can be anything from building the confidence through reduction in fatigue and improvement in technique to actual visualization exercises and spending time actually uh, you know, directing some energy towards that process itself. The average time for the peaking phase is gonna be a little bit shorter based on how long the other two phases are or based on how far out the competition is, uh, how much the athlete needs to spend time developing technical prowess. These can be anywhere from one week, or two weeks, to uh, four weeks to six weeks or so. It really depends on the size of the athlete and then the qualification of the athlete. Let's look at some proper applications of phase potentiation. So sequencing of phases. How do we order these phases? How do we place them in the correct order? Uh, obviously, just like if you were building a, a building or a skyscraper, you have to start with the foundation. The very first thing that's done is a foundation is built. It's important to note in the analogy of a skyscraper versus a training process that the foundation is built first before they actually build the structure itself. Just like in our training process, the general phase needs to be finished and completed to some degree before the next phases uh, occur. But knowing that when someone is building a skyscraper, they do put elements that are building towards the actual structure itself. So you don't just have a foundation, then you slap a building on. Same with the general training. There's a, continu there's a continuation and a preparation for the strength phase to take place. This occurs through certain things like having the right variations, the right exercises to transfer from one phase to the next, uh, preparing that technique, going from very basic technique to more complex technique. These things just need to be thought of in a way that you're planning for the general phase to transition into the strength phase. After the foundation's been built, the strength phase can be equated to basically the actual building structure itself. This is where the main height of the building is developed. Many, many floors are built on top of each other. That's the bulk of the training here that's gonna take place for a lot of weightlifters is in the strength phase, the, the execution of the technique is gonna become more refined. The more specific qualities are being done here in this phase, just like in the skyscraper, the bulk of the actual building itself relies there. Then the final period, the final phase, the peaking phase could be equated to the top of a skyscraper or even like the antenna. It's very, very small, uh, but it does actually increase the absolute height of the building. So at the very, very peak, we have this, this tiny phase or the smaller phase that basically rounds out the entire uh, training process. Just like in a skyscraper, that little peak, the top is gonna be the thing that caps off the training uh, and is at the very end to bring the results to the highest possible level. With the peaking phase, we wanna capitalize on all of the training done before uh, by maximizing our results there. Balancing directed adaptation versus adaptive resistance. Having phases that are directed unilaterally at one quality primarily are going to benefit us more because we can spend more energy directed at that one thing we're trying to do. If our goal here is to develop work capacity and strength and hypertrophy, then we can put all of our resources into that quality and achieve a higher result in that because of the directed work we're doing uh, in a unilateral way on that stuff. Same for strength, same for peaking. We're, we're directing everything we can to that. Uh, versus having phases that are very, very similar, maybe include all of these different things or a concurrent program that has all things developed at the same time. 
we don't have the luxury of putting as much energy into each quality or each thing if we're doing that every single week or every single month. Every training block is homogenous. The other main benefit or proper application would be the strategic phase length based on the, the calendar year uh, or the lifter's needs. So breaking these qualities into different phases allows us to really capitalize on spending time on weaknesses, spending time on the thing that the athlete needs to develop to become better. Uh, for example, a lifter who is very, very weak and lacks physical strength, lacks, you know, they're too light in the weight class, they're too tall for the weight class, they can spend more time in the general phase and capitalize on what they need to bring themselves to a higher result faster because they were able to spend time on the thing that they needed to work on most. Based on the calendar year, the further out from competition, we can spend more time again on things that are more important rather than having to, you know, for example, maintain top level skill and the absolute perfection of the movements in the peaking phase from through a year, we can spend time developing the underlying things that are gonna bring the results higher at the end. A misapplication of phase potentiation would be really an improper sequencing of these phases. Doesn't make a lot of sense to have someone doing a general phase of training right before a peaking phase, right before a competition. This situation would be less advantageous because there's no, there's no potentiation from a block of training that's very, very different from the actual competition exercises and then jumping right into that. Uh, again, any, any disorder or incorrect ordering of these would be improper. That's not to say that uh, an athlete can't do a competition at the end of any of these phases, at the end of a general phase or at the end of a strength phase. It just wouldn't be the competition that have uh, any weight to it. There's no real need to be, you're not gonna expect the best results there. Uh, you know, it would be more of a, a training session, essentially. An improper length, okay? Too little of any of these phases. Uh, a week of general training, uh, two weeks of strength training of a strength phase, and then uh, five weeks of a peaking phase is probably not gonna be the best scenario for the, the best results, right? We're not really able to accumulate any kind of adaptations with those really, really short training blocks and you're gonna end up in a place where you've, you've not built anything, right? And then too extreme a variation between phases. We don't wanna have a huge drop between these phases because a change in, in general training going from, let's say, high repetition general exercises, eight and 10 reps in the squat, to a dramatically big shift or a dramatic shift in the strength phase of doing sets of two and three with near maximum weights in the squats uh, that shift is really big and that's going to be a situation that doesn't lend itself well to potentiating one phase. You're going to have a huge drop off, there's going to be kind of a shock and then it's not going to really do what you want. And then the, the last would be really not doing it at all. Having essentially uh, the same exact program done throughout the entirety of the training cycle of the training year. Uh, if the lifter is doing, you know, trying to accomplish all of these goals at the same time or just neglecting certain things in exchange for using just one narrow band of training, right? We're only using those type of methods that we do use in a peaking phase, near maximum snatch and clean and jerk year round. There's no phase structure there. Uh, same with strength or same with general. You wouldn't expect to become a good weightlifter doing sets of 10 in the squat year round, right? If you guys like what you heard here, go ahead and subscribe or go check out jtsstrength.com.